Question number six. You are given a figure. Figure one shows a sketch of part of the curve C1 and C2 with equations C1 y equals x cube minus 6x plus 9. C2 y equals minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 1. The curves C1 and C2 intersect at point A and B. Point A has coordinates 1 comma 4. Using algebra and showing all steps of your working, find the coordinates of the point B. The question carries 4 marks. So look at the diagram here. There are two points of intersection. Point A which is already given 1 comma 4 and another point B. They want you to find these uh, exact coordinates of this point B. So whenever we talk about point of intersection, we always equate both the both the functions and try to so, try to solve the function. So when you equate it, you can write it as x cube minus 6x plus 9 equals minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 1. And maybe we put all these terms to one side of the equation. You will have x cube plus 2x squared, 6 minus 6x minus 7x is minus 13x, 9 plus 1 is 10 equal to 0. So to find the point of intersection, we need to solve this cubic equation. So you get three x values and substitute the x values back into any one of the equation to find the y coordinates of the point. But the thing is, solving there are several methods to solve a, a cubic equation, but it's not included in our syllabus. So what do we do? When you solve this, you are supposed to get three x values because there are three point of intersection. One is the parabola, another one is a cubic function, cubic function. So let's say this function is somewhere here, you will get another point of intersection. But they don't care about the third point of intersection. We are talking about only two point of intersection A and B. So we have already x is equal to one here. That tells us that when you solve this, one of the x value will be one. Because this point of the x coordinate of this point is 1. So that means x is x equals 1 is the solution of this uh, cubic equation. Even if you want to verify, you can substitute 1 here, you will have 1 plus 2 minus 13 plus 10, which is 13 minus 13 is 0. So x is equal to 1 is the solution for cubic this cubic equation. So what we are going to do, if x is equal to 1 is a solution, x minus 1, you put 1 to this side, x minus 1 is a factor of this uh, cubic function. So we are going to use this factor to, to use long division method or synthetic division method to reduce this cubic equation into a, into a quadratic equation. Then you can solve it easily. We know that x minus 1 is a factor. So I'm going to use a synthetic division method to reduce this cubic equation into a quadratic equation. So use synthetic division. If you are comfortable with long division method, apply long division method. You can apply either one of these methods. Write all the coefficients 1, 2, minus 13 and 10. If x minus 1 is a fa factor, take it as x is equal to 1. So put the first term as 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. The uh, outside element here, the number here, should be multiplied with this. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 plus 1, 3, multiply this again, 1 times 3, minus 13 plus 3 is minus 10, multiply this, minus 10. Your remainder sh should be 0, because this is a factor, x minus 1 is a factor. If you get some other number here, that's wrong. So using these three numbers, I'm going to form a quadratic equation x squared minus 3x, sorry, uh, plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Solve this quadratic equation. I think the two factors are x plus 5 into x minus 2. So the two x values are minus 5 and 2. So we got two x values. So I'm going to repeat this again. Let's say at some point you need to solve a quadratic equation, a cubic equation, but there is no constant term. If there is no constant term, our life will be much easier because you take x as a common factor out. If let's say there is no constant, constant term here, 
you can take x as a common factor out, you'll be left with a quadratic function here. So it's easy to solve. But the moment you have a constant term here, you try to, there is another method, you can, you can substitute 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2 to get the first integer solution of this cubic equation. But in this case, we have one solution here, x is equal to 1 is one of the solution. So x minus, if x is equal to 1 is one of the solution, x minus 1 is a factor. So we are going to use synthetic division or you can use long division method to find the quotient which is a quadratic equation. So this has been reduced to a quadratic equation. On solving you get two x values. But look at the values x is equal to minus 5 is somewhere here along the x axis. So that's the third uh, point of intersection. We don't care about this point. We take only x is equal to 2. So this should be 2. 2 comma y value substitute x is equal to 2 into any one of the equation. So you get the y value. So when you substitute x is equal to 2 here, 8 minus 12 is minus 4, minus 4 plus 9 is 5. That's the y coordinate. That's all. This is how we find the, the exact coordinates of this point P, point B. Now, the finite region R shown shaded in figure 1 is bounded by curve 1 and curve 2. Part B, use algebraic integration to find the exact area of R. The question has 5 marks. Now in part B, they want you to find this uh, shaded area of the shaded region. So in chapter 8, in chapter 8, the integration, if you go to uh, 8.6 or 8.4, if I'm not wrong, there is this topic called area between two curves. So if you have to, if you have to find the, the area between two curves, we are going to use integration, definite integral. So we use integral, the area is integral, the x coordinates of point of intersection, which is 1 to 2. And look at the shaded region. The curve on top is C2. That's the quadratic quadratic function. So C2. The curve below is C1. So C2 minus C1 dx. That's how you find the area between two curves. Always take a look at the the shaded part and always take the top curve first minus the bottom one. Minus the bottom one. Because when you integrate this uh, the curve on top between this limit 1 to 2 you will get this area. The area underneath the curve. This whole area. And if you integrate this curve between the same limit, you will get the area underneath this, this curve. So when you subtract the whole area minus the bottom area, you can get the shaded area. That's the reason we subtract these uh, two functions, the top one minus the bottom one. So it will be integral 1 to 2. The top one is C2 minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 1 minus the bottom one is a cubic function x cubed minus 6x plus 9 dx. That's it. When you integrate and substitute, they apply the limits, you get the area already. Maybe before we integrate, we can tidy this up a little bit. We can write it as, uh, okay minus 2x square, minus 2x square, minus x cube, 7x plus 6x is 13x, minus 1 minus 9 is minus 10 dx, integral 1 to 2. Now integrate this, when you integrate this, it will become 2x cube upon 3, minus x to the power 4 upon 4, plus 13x will become 13x square upon 2 minus 10x. Don't add plus c because this is a definite integral. And substitute the upper limit and the lower limit. You will get the approximate value of this uh, integral. So apply the upper limit first. 
So it will be 8, 2 cube is 8, minus 2 into 8 is minus 16 upon 3. 2 to the power 4 is 16, 2 to the power 4 is 16, 16 upon 4 is just 4. 13, 2 square is 4, 4 by 2 is 2. So plus 26, 2 times 3 is 26, minus 2 times 10, 20, that's the upper limit. Minus, substitute the lower limit now. When you substitute 1 here, replace x by 1. Minus 2 by 3, minus 1 upon 4, plus 13 upon 2, minus 10. 10 into 1 is 10. That's it, you simplify this. Uh, here you have minus 24, so minus 16 upon 3, minus 24, so plus 2, and minus of, here it will be, we need to take LCM and simplify. So I'm going to multiply by minus, plus 2 by 3, plus 1 upon 4, minus 13 upon 2, plus 10. So take uh, 12 as the LCM. So you need to multiply this by 4, minus 64, plus multiply by 12, 24, multiply by 4, 8, multiply by 3, multiply by 6, so 60, 78, plus 120, divided by 12. I had taken 12 as uh, LCM. You just plug in everything in your calculator, it will straight away give you the, uh, the final answer. So, okay. We have a little bit of problem here. Okay, minus uh, 130, minus 130, 142. And positive you have, you have 144, 52, 155 divided by 12, which is 13 upon 12. That's the answer. You're supposed to get the value as a positive number. So, when we find the area, even if it is a negative, you cannot write it as a negative value because the area is supposed to be a positive value, positive number. So, 13 upon 2 square units, that's your area between these two curves.